Good evening, everybody. Welcome back for our second week of our Huga worship. I'm Aaron Dozak. I'm downstairs in my Huga spot. Tonight, you're going to want two candles. Maybe they're from your Advent wreath, like mine are, or they can be any candles you have laying around the house. We'll be lighting them later in tonight's worship service. Tonight's theme is peace. This Advent at Celebration, we focus on the comfort and joy of the season of preparation. We invite you to join us as we practice the Scandinavian art of coziness, huga. Look around and find a cozy nook to share together for tonight's service. Enjoy a cup of coffee or hot cocoa. Find a warm blanket and share a conversation tonight. Here you can be you, be seen, and belong. Now won't you join us in song as we worship together. Because of war, because of violence in our communities, because there is still so much unrest in Jerusalem, we light a candle of peace. Because hatred is still so strong, because so many swords have not yet been beaten into plowshares, we light a candle of peace. May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. May the light say to all that God's peace is coming on earth as it already is in heaven. Friends, be not afraid. God's peace is at hand. everyone. I am Nicole Grant, the Senior High Youth Director here at Celebration, and right now we are going into the readings for tonight. So a little background into the first reading. The first reading is from the first chapter of Luke and actually comes right before Jesus is born. And the words that we will that will be read tonight come from this man named Zechariah. And Zechariah was a priest and also the father of John the Baptist. 
and John the Baptist was Jesus's cousin and also the last prophet to come, declaring to the pe people to prepare the way for Jesus. Um, and the words that Zechariah speaks in this passage are prophesied. So these are words that he was given from the Holy Spirit declaring what John the Baptist was going to do, what Jesus was going to do, and also just speaks truth into who Jesus is. And these words are also for us today. So let's take a listen. The first reading is from the first chapter of Luke. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of the salvation to his people by forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from the high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Hi, Pastor Jeff here. Our theme for these Advent worship services is Huga, the Scandinavian art of coziness. And the word for tonight is peace. Nothing's more peaceful for me than making bread right here in my very own kitchen. I use a very simple recipe. One teaspoon of yeast, two teaspoons of sea salt, one and a half cups of warm water, and three cups of quality bread flour. Mix by hand and set aside for eight to eight, 18 hours. I like to set mine aside overnight and bake the next day. Bake it in a Dutch oven, heat the oven for 30 minutes at 450 degrees, and then bake for 45 minutes. There's nothing quite as cozy and peaceful as a house filled with the delicious scent of freshly baked bread. It reminds me of my childhood, when my mom would make several loaves at a time, including always one extra to be eaten warm with butter right out of the oven. If you were lucky, you'd get the heel of the loaf with all of that extra crusty goodness. If you have a favorite memory that includes homemade bread, send me a comment on this video from worship tonight. Advent is a time for cozy home activities. We wholeheartedly encourage this. Why, just today, we had four different families stop by and leave us homemade treats while Lisa and I are quarantined. Cookies and, and homemade soup. Advent is the time that leads to the Christmas celebration, and it's a time to refocus. Do an Advent calendar together. Light some candles. Share some extra prayers. Break out a puzzle. Baby, it's cold outside and some of us can't go out anyway. So why not double down on that home time with peaceful, cozy activities? But as you cozy in, I would remind you of something important. Not everything we do in this season is meant to be turned inward. Not all of this season and its fun is for you to keep cozily to yourself. I've found for the past few years, the only thing more fun than baking up some fresh, warm bread is taking a loaf and sharing it with a neighbor. Sometimes I don't even know where I'm going until I get in my car and start driving. But when I get to my friend's house and I hand them that warm loaf of bread and I tell them how much they mean to me, well, they can't wait for me to leave so they can dig in. So my thought for today is get cozy. Have some Advent fun. 
But try at the same time to reach out and make someone else's day a little brighter if you can. At the end of the Gospel of John, after Jesus was raised, it says that his followers were gathered together behind locked doors, kind of like we are in this experience now in the pandemic. They weren't getting cozy. They were actually afraid that the local authorities would come and get them the way they came and got Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus appeared and said to them, Peace be with you. He had told them back in chapter 14 that their future would be shaped by his peace, and now his peace was penetrating those locked doors to show them that wherever they were, he would be with them too. But he also said this as he gave them his peace, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Jesus had peace for them as they were tucked away safe, but he also reminded them that they could not stay there. And so he breathed new life into them and commissioned them by the Spirit to continue his work of peace in the world. So yes, by all means, get cozy when you can. Cook, bake, settle in. Especially those of you who have been sick who are high risk. You're precious to us. We want you to be safe. But remember, Jesus gives peace not only to comfort us where we are, he gives us peace so we can be called out into the world in love. Experience the joys of sharing and giving all through the year, whenever you can. And remember, Jesus gave peace because his knew that he knew that his followers would face great adversity. The peace of God is never perfect peace on this side of heaven. Even now, I have to admit the frustration that I have, that I'm quarantined, And I can't give this loaf of bread to anyone. And the stores are out of quality bread flour again, so I guess my baking days will be on hold. Jesus doesn't make these hard times disappear. And faith is not an escape hatch from the world. His peace is with me behind locked doors today. And his peace is calling me out to love my neighbor. And his peace tempers my frustration with myself, with the world. We want to send you a blessing for peace wherever you are today, to all the places you've been called in love, and to the imperfections of life. We love you, Celebration. Peace. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need with a spoken response. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of Advent, your peace means wholeness, wellness, and health. As we spend our time during this season, challenged by the global pandemic, to spend more time at home, at a slower pace, help us to find peace in the people and things around us. Grant us patience. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. Make us aware of the comforts we enjoy, and as we cultivate the art of coziness, let a certain calm come over the places where we live. We are living in a world that always wants to go faster, but in order to do that, we often have to hollow things of their meaning. In Advent, you stop us, slow us. Help us find the peace that is right before our eyes in the places where we live. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Coming one, remind us at the same time that peace cannot be attained by locking ourselves away from the cares of this world and the needs of our neighbors. So as we find peace within our homes, with the warming of the light of your peace, shine out to those around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is yes. green. Our activities are limited now. It is true, but we still have the opportunity to extend peace in tangible ways. As you open your eyes to peace, open our hearts to justice, kindness, and caring. By our hand, feed the hungry. By our gentle care, house the homeless. Clothe the naked. Let those who have never felt welcomed and loved find peace when they connect with your body, the church. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Accept these, our prayers, O God, and show us your abiding mercy as we look with joyful anticipation for the coming of Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Director of Youth and Family Ministries Primary. And tonight I get the exciting opportunity to share with you an activity that you can do at home to talk about God's peace during this time in our Advent season. Now, if you received a December bag, if you're one of our youth and families, inside the big bag, you'll find a smaller bag with week two. And you're going to want to take that out right now. It'll have all the supplies that you need inside. If you're watching and did not receive one of our Youth and Family Family Connection bags, simply grab some sheets of paper and you can do this activity along with us as well. What we want you to do is use those slips of paper and write or draw things on them that are hard for you right now. Some examples might be distance learning, working from home, teaching your children at home, loneliness, getting along with difficult people, being stuck inside, health issues, the list goes on and on. So we want you to write some of those things down or draw pictures of those things, however you wanna communicate those on those slips of paper. And then sit around a table and each take turns sharing one thing that you're having a hard time with right now. And once you go around the table, do it again. Do it as many times as you want to, to share some of those things that are hard right now. And the reason we want you to do those things is that we all are going through a lot, especially right now during this pandemic. And so we wanna acknowledge those things and talk about things, but also remember that when we turn to God with these things and when we share these things, God can give us peace and we can find peace in him. 
So continue to share those big feelings, share what's going on, but don't forget to turn towards God and you will find peace. Hi, I'm Nicole Oftedell, Youth and Family Director at Celebration. Tonight I'm going to talk about the Huga. The Danes have been known to call the night sky the duvet of darkness, seen it as a heavy blanket that engages huga, which is the art of coziness. Pick a night this week to go out under the winter sky, bundle up if need be, and bring a warm drink like coffee, tea, or how about cocoa with marshmallows? That sounds really yummy. Bring a candle and the piece of paper with what is difficult for you right now. Get comfy, then look up. Notice how big God's universe is and how small you are and then embrace the duvet of darkness around you. Burn your papers together and rest under God's sky in silence or in warm conversation. Enjoy this time in God's creation. Join us again next Wednesday for our final midweek Advent service. To continue the cell the mission of celebration, offerings are accepted on our website, celebrationlutheranchurch.com, or mailed in. Look for our family Christmas program on Sunday, December 20th, that will be posted online at 10 a.m. And there are still spots available to help with our Adopt a Family mission. Um, see our website for more information on how to sign up through Sign Up Genius. If you would like to sponsor a virtual poinsettia, donations are currently be accept being accepted in memorial or celebration of someone in your life. These names will be lifted up special during our Christmas Eve worship service, and the donations will go toward the CLC Free Store. Another opportunity coming up here is to participate in Project Light Up the Night. If your family would be excited to make a luminary for our Christmas Eve and help us light up the night, check out Celebration's website for more details. Uh, you'll find a YouTube link there and various ways to make your luminary. At Celebration, we plan to hold an outdoor event on Christmas Eve and would love for your help guiding people to the light of Christ and welcoming all. Also on Christmas Eve, we'll have our Celebration Christmas Eve service, a full service available online for you to watch anytime on December 24th. The in-person Christmas Together gatherings will be brief, outdoor events with a candlelight, song, and prayer, and they will be held Christmas Eve at 6, 7, 8, and 9 p.m. I receive the Lord's blessing. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Go in peace, serve the Lord.